Hello and welcome back everyone to Explorers of Elsewhere's Tales from Elsewhere, our live streamed Daggerheart uh, campaign, episodic campaign thing. Hi, I'm DM Dan, it is Halloween. Halloween. And I'm joined by Julia, Nate, Livy and Dan. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I hope everyone is sufficiently uh, bereft of pee and rich with tea, um, <laughs> because we're about to jump back in. Uh, we find our explorers um, in the town, the relatively new town of Cayley Point, uh, which has put out a bit of a distress call because uh, the mayor of the town believes that uh, this e this n this very night. The town will be reduced to wreck and ruin uh, at the, um, the the ghostly hands of a mysterious spectral grave ship. Um, having started their preliminary investigations, uh, the explorers have headed to the nearby outpost of uh, Tenth Bridge and found uh, all of its inhabitants missing uh, but there were a few straggler remainer uh, skeletons um, loitering in the shadows of um, the small outpost town of perhaps 40, 40 unfortunate souls uh, rushing back to Cayley Point um, you are preparing some final kind of preparations to prepare yourself for the inevitable attack from this uh, ghost ship um, and all we can do now uh, is kind of wait as the clock ticks down to midnight. Um, there's a few things that you've got to do first, actually, before we hit midnight. But who would like to watch the intro video and then dive back in? Yeah. Go on, then. Marvellous. <laughs> Let's go. All across the unknown world, rediscovery pushes ever onwards to find the lands and people lost all thanks to our brave explorers hi i'm dan and i'm playing vanya the wolfkin warrior hey i'm livy i'm going to be playing ray Ree, the spirit ranger hi i'm julia and i'm playing lucretia a laravar wizard hi i'm nate and i'm playing azakar on the Jani seraph and my name is DM Dan. I'll be the GM in these adventures. The further we go, the more we learn of these magical tales from elsewhere. So, we find the four of you having recently arrived back in the town of Tanthbridge. Um, there is a plan uh, that you're setting in motion. Um, the, you're, you're going to presumably speak to the, uh, the owner of the lumber mill to acquire enough kind of wooden planks to allow the townsfolk to barricade themselves in their houses for the inevitable attack. Uh, but you're also going to need some lumber to build some decoys mm, <laughs> uh, around lovely. the central watchtower at atop the hill in the middle of Cayley Point. Um, you're going to build some decoys to, in an attempt to lure the skelebobs into a, like a killing field uh, where you're going to raise up wooden palisades to trap them in and then do unspeakable things to them um, but we're also going to speak to the town's local priestess uh, who's who's going on that little sojourn uh, Azakar is going to go and he is going to turn to Lucretia and say uh, you you like nature yes love it um Good golden, good golden's a female dragon, right, Dan? Uh, a boy dragon. A boy dragon. It's got a divine a winkus. Yeah, uh, good golden. He is, he is a, a god of nature. Indeed. Perhaps it would be of interest to you. I will come along out of academic interest. Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous. Okay, so. Um, as the two of you head across town, uh, you you can see that there are a number of sort of like worried faces um, 
in the windows watching you pass as um, the sky overhead gets darker and darker as you kind of uh, begin your uh, your journey into evening. Um, and in the southwest corner of of the town, so the west south, the southwest corner of of the hill um, at the centre of the town, uh, you see a building that looks uh, unlike. Uh, a lot of the other buildings um whereas uh the other buildings are quite like high vaulted ceilings um lots of kind of sharp angles um the chapel it's got this very kind of rounded almost welcoming aesthetic it seems like a, a harbor of peace and well-being in this kind of miasma of um despair but as the two of you ascend the steps up into the chapel um you find like knelt down in front of an altar um like in in front of you is uh a slender dark skinned lorivar woman with like long black hair that reaches past like down past her waist Um, you see a number of um, very kind of intricate looking ornamentations like decorating her hair and the tops of her ears and as she hears the two of you enter she stands and turns to you Uh, you notice that her makeup which is immaculately uh, applied um, long kind of sweeping eyelash uh, like well long sweeping wings for, over her eyes um, her lips kind of contoured into a, a tight almost like a puckered um, shape all in this bright lustrous silver um, and she regards you with these big dark eyes uh, and I since you are a fellow devout I am she good Good evening she steps as she walks towards you you notice that the the pendant of Gagoldin that hangs around her neck uh, which is made of like a carved almost mossy like stone stands kind of apart from the rest of, of what she's wearing and the accent that she has is is one that you've never kind of really heard uh, before, but she she kind of bows slightly, um, and these are troubling times. Please, this is a refuge. You may speak your mind. You may ask for help. What can we do? We are. We believe that we will be up against um, the undead. And we have come for guidance and possibly some sort of divinity to help us. I assume, uh, with Golden's grace, that this is a hypothesis gained from travel to Tanth Bridge? It is. This is troubling news. Hmm. What what would you ask of my chapel? Um, if I may, we believe we're up against a grave ship. It is a, an incorporeal mass of souls which becomes corporeal when it makes landfall. Um, we've already struck down a few of them, skeletons and the like, but with it, there's every likelihood it's going to be a veritable horde. Is there any type of divine magic that can, I don't know, turn the undead in some way, just in case we are up against supreme numbers? The, the priestess ponders for a moment. She lifts a finger to her bottom lip pinches it slightly between her index and thumb Uh, I am happy to lend my aid 
divine spellcasting would be a boon in what is to come. Alternatively, I can provide I can provide protections for the townsfolk. I can ward their defenses. Or I can if you intend on fighting this Karev ship alone I can imbue your weapons with 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 divine essence so that your physical attacks may cause damage to the incorporeal nature of the grave ship can you, by any chance, imbue this? It's asking for a friend. Uh, I can imbue inanimate objects with Gogoldin's caress. So, sort of gauntlets, for example. Absolutely. Oh, Vanya is going to be very happy about. That. He will be. He's very what? keen on punching. So that's the menu, is it? Imbuing defending or lending aid in the fight correct what do you recommend she ponders and on the one hand I would I would throw my weight behind the protection of the townsfolk, of course. However, I feel that without a method of striking at this foe, you will not achieve victory. I am inclined to agree. What do you think, Car? Hmm. I mean, my, my weapon is already is already imbued with divinity. She, but she, another pair of gauntlets would help with that. She looks to you, Lucretia. Um, I smell the sense of the arcane upon you. <laughs> Guilty? I would... If you are versed in this d dangerous art, then perhaps you are already well equipped for what is to come. I mean, potentially. Do you think that uh, my magic will make a dent in this ship? The priestess nods. If the well. two of you are able to imbue the attacks of your allies yourselves then uh, I can tend to other uh, other priorities in the town. Okay, so we take care of the imbuing and you defend the people. Is that what you're saying? Correct. I can place defensive sigils throughout the town to ensure that any marauding undead are dispatched. Mm. I it sounds that like sounds a plan. Blended, yes. What? What is? What is your plan of attack? A ghost ship can can fly at some considerable heights. How will you tempt it down? We thought we might lure them with some fake townsfolk to the central area around uh, in the center of town while all the people are hidden away in their house very good very good might this will the the prospect of new the prospect of easy prey will be enticing to the crew of a ghost of a grave ship but may I also suggest 
that you perhaps you consider the captain of such ship might be a creature of pride of hubris perhaps the offer the opportunity of a greater prize in a, in one of you might tempt the leader of such a vessel down so perhaps one of us stands on the tower and waves and shouts oi i'm here hello perhaps like that. perhaps mm. well as a car you heard you heard the lady get up on the tower on wait a minute you just said you to do it no 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 i think you look a lot stronger than me <laughs> or do you think vanya would do it i think vanya would have I mean, I know Ray would do it. She seems <laughs> utterly nuts. I love her. But, you know, Vanya might feel upset if we don't give him the opportunity as well. I, I think his brashness will be a good calling to them. He's just itching to sucker punch that ship, isn't he? Oh, he always is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Just to confirm, what would you like this priestess to do very specifically? Uh, to protect the... To put some sigils to around. Ward, protect, okay. Yeah, to the town, protect to, Yeah, hopefully that will take out a few of the undead in and of itself as they run off to try and get into the houses or something. Get <laughs> Landmines okay. will go off. Divine landmines. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very good, very good. Um... Okay, is there anything else you'd like to discuss with the priestess, or...? No, I, don't, I think we're done with the priestess. I need to figure out how the heck I imbued someone else's weapon with magic. <laughs> if that was what she was implying. So you can do things like tag teams and... Oh, yeah, okay. it would be like a tag team thing. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Um, who is... Uh, so whilst Azakar and... Uh, Lucretia doing that between Vanya and Rayri, who was gathering the townsfolk to instruct them to start this grand Home Alone style defense plan? <laughs> I think mean, Rayri's more than happy to do that. She yeah. has experience. I mean, one of her experiences is treehouse architect. Um, so she is. <laughs> building things okay treehouse architect okay <laughs> yeah no, that's that's fine uh so one hope for that takes you down to two um how the townsfolk are gathered around you rayry how are you approaching uh i mean obviously they're they're like already on board in so much as if they're not on board they'll probably not live to see tomorrow um mm -hmm. but how are you going about kind of uh, turning this ragtag group of commoners into a an efficient workforce that is building uh, moving decoy dummies and a lifting yeah. barricade palisade wall uh, i think she gets into the center of town kind of gets a little Gets a little box to stand on. Huh. She's a little bit higher up. And uh, gets Vinny to do a big bark, get everyone's attention. Uh -huh. Vinny, oh, I've him up. He does. He goes around, literally herding them up. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. <laughs> hey, folks. Oh, man. We're going to get all of you guys over there. Do 10. All right, yeah. You're building big walls, right? Big walls. You guys over there, yeah? You're making mannequins. Don't ask why. We just are. You guys over there, you've got to find things to dress the mannequins. I want, I want lady mannequins. I want boy mannequins. I want girl mannequins. I want old people mannequins. We've got to make it look real. Right. You, over there. It's <laughs> quite a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, just going to explain kind of thing. Maybe like do a get a stick, make a plan in the dirt. Just kind of. She's like a little Napoleon esque uh, rabble rouser. Just get her, just whipping all into shape. Hmm. 
imposter. <laughs> okay. Um, what what ability are you using for this? I mean, it sounds a bit like intimidation. Uh, <laughs> uh, it sounds a bit like a presence check. Uh, Abinus, can I use my treehouse architect? You, you can, yes, yes. Attack? I've already taken the hope for that, so yeah, adds plus two. Um, Are you guys rolling on fire tonight? Mm. Yeah. What, what was. So uh, twelve plus, plus two for Trios Architect. And presence. Fourteen. Oh, plus your presence, yeah. Yep. Plus my presence. Oh, presence. Oh, presence. Yeah, plus zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Beef is suggesting, Nate, that it is your your presence that's that's doing all this. We need to nerf you. Um, <laughs> So, uh, a grand total of 14. Um, with hope. So, uh, the townsfolk, inspired <laughs> by yeah. this uh, this explorer that's um, come to help save them, um, they are galvanised to not only complete uh, the projects, but they complete all of the projects well. Um, nothing hey. has sort of like accidentally been a bit less good uh, because they're multitasking but yeah, the mannequins are great, uh, some of them even wiggle um, wobble around um, the Maybe so it's a bunch of weebles yeah, yeah pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just explain to me sorry these sort of like palis- this palisade ball idea because it sounded like the, they would be on the floor and then something would happen and then suddenly they'd like erect yes. yeah we'd have to have some kind yeah. of pop up um sorry this um yeah I mean some kind of pop up style trap erection I guess or all four of us we have yeah. break, all of us can pull them up once yeah, they get some contraption so that the the walls are hidden under some leaves and stuff um dirt and then when they're all in this watchtower area (laughs) okay okay um yeah in which case that is that is sorted and they've done a good job if it makes sense if i'm thinking aloud if this boat thing is going to come down near the watchtower as the the, the the skellies descend onto the 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 fake people we could we could be pulling these ropes on top of the tower um to pull the the the, the walls up and then we'll be also on top of the tower ready mm. to bombard this ship whilst these skelly bobs are trapped at the bottom <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we don't know exactly where the ship's going to park itself. It may not be right up against the watchtower. So yeah. for you, Vanya, who needs in melee range, that could be an issue. An issue. <laughs> I just start punching all the skellies on the floor. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Like um, Sauron in the, in the <laughs> <laughs> second day final five battle. At a time. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, okay, so uh, we we have a bit of a plan. Um, your so the the well the, the barricades for the homes have been sorted. Um, you've more managed to. Um, kind of build the decoys and the traps uh, and uh, the priestess is going to go around and begin kind of bolstering the defences around the town as well Um, that takes you know some considerable number of hours Um, as the lights around the town of Cayley Point begin to turn on as um you know, evening gives way to night. 
where do we find the four of you on the eve of this defence? Who is going to stand on the watchtower and do a big wave of the arms and go, ooh, look at me? <laughs> With Banya, I don't know where he... Ooh, me? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> we we were thinking if you go on to the top of the watchtower, uh-huh. you can... You'll be quite good prey for them. <laughs> you, you might draw the captain out, I thought. So I can, I can, like, get in conflict with the captain. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yes. I understand predator, predator and prey mentality. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. So, <laughs> Vanya's going to be posted up in the watchtower. Uh, where's Rayri going to be posted? I think, I mean, it is from range weapons. I would like to stand maybe on top of one of the hang- Is it in a square? Like, are we trying to get them in the middle of the square? Uh, I'm trying to get them in the middle of the, the area of the watchtower. Uh, like, uh, that circle, basically. Yeah. Of make, uh, fake stools and fake mannequins so that maybe it looks all like on the tower. people on there. Yeah, we have to all be on the tower, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so the the palisades, the pop up palisades that the townsfolk have built, um, form an octagon around oh. the watchtower uh, on the top of this hill in the centre of the town. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a lot of room to move around within the sort of like the palisade, palisaded area. Um, so you know, you could I you could be on either side of the wall when they kind of pop mm. up uh, or you could be in the watchtower or whatnot. yes yeah, up to you uh, I think I'd probably be in the watchtower as I and shoot far from all angles yeah so it makes sense they could be up okay uh, Lucretia um I feel like I've got a lot of ranged stuff it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to be in the tower start out on the tower, yeah. Okay, and Azakar? Um, I'll be down on the ground then. Cool. Around the tower. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um, in which case, are the four of you ready? Born ready. Okay. <clears throat> so. Did we decide how we're dealing with the skelly bobs once they're trapped in? Fighting around the world, fighting them. <laughs> fighting them. Gonna punch them. <laughs> Gonna punch them. I mean, if I was down there, I'd punch them all. But <laughs> I'm on yeah. top of the tower. <laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe. I, yeah. Well, I was gonna say you can certainly, you, you know, you, you're in the watchtower, but it's not so tall that you wouldn't ever be able to make it down yeah, to to yeah, help out. Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So. The four of you uh, prepare yourselves in the central watchtower as um, you see the lights uh, throughout the town kind of go out as people um, kind of cast themselves into darkness to to help with their with their hiding um, until all you can see is all that you can see is illuminated by uh, the moon that's partially covered over by this um, like light but dark like light as in thickness but dark clouds um, and you all feel the temperature begin to Ooh. drop very rapidly as the clouds part and the moon seems to be glowing brighter than usual, pretty much as the clocks hit midnight. And in the distance, you see a large galleon-like ship with broken hull, tattered sails, um, ragged kind of rigging um is lazily drifting across the clouds that uh, ac- you know through the sky overhead um and the closer it gets the colder it 
gets um and as it begins kind of drifting towards you uh who well it gets to within sort of like far range uh who wants to do is there anything that you lot are doing because we are fundamentally uh in combat now so yeah who wants to open up did you first? say very far range was that very far range but you do, can do we wish. want to get its attention you <laughs> could i do something very quickly yes absolutely. could i roll my prayer dice you can Ooh. so they are two d4s so let's roll those Okay, so we've got a one and a four. So to keep you up to date, Julia, my prayer yeah. dice give me um I can use I can spend one of them to reduce incoming damage, add to any roll result after the roll. Um or additionally I can assist in exchange of values for that many hope, and I can give that to any PC. So basically I can give some hope. Ooh, I can give four hope, nice. I could give one hope. Okay. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, um, yes, great. It, it is at far range, uh, very far range, sorry. As Vanya starts going, hello, over here, I go, oh, I was thinking I'd just throw a fireball at it. Is that okay if I do that? Yeah. Beautiful. I was told to attract them, so you go ahead. I'll get their attention, you draw them in. <laughs> okay, um, as this this ship begins sort of like lowering down towards the ground, uh, as it seems to be uh, ho- like zoning in on you, the f- or the three of you in the watchtower, four if we include Vinny. Um, but yeah, as it comes into range, uh, by all means, Lucretia, start. I will make a spell cast roll yeah, against the ship. It is 13, what is it? Uh, 16 with hope. 16 with hope so that takes you up to five um um, what does your fireball do it uh well he needs the ship the target and all creatures very close to them must make a reaction roll 12. (laughs) i just imagine this ship is like coming like a doomsday and then suddenly (laughs) <laughs> it's not going to be that big it's d8 plus 5 magic damage oh. if they fail their reaction roll oh no I've rubbed my face paint off um, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, so uh, so you, you've rolled a uh, was it 15 no uh, 17 what did you roll uh, uh, I rolled a 16 a 16 with, with hope okay you conjure this fireball and as you launch it towards the ship Mm. and like you you all watch as this moat of sort of like fire gets smaller and smaller you then watch as the ship (gasps) banks and the fireball just Ah. grazes past it and misses just grazes past okay okay uh, I, I think I'm getting the measure of it. <laughs> um, who's going next? Um, if that was a miss. If I failed, it's your turn, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, oh, no. yes. That is oh. very true. Um, in which case, as it... Uh, yeah, as it, like, banks off to the right, um, it then sort of, like, rotates a full 360 until it's right way up and kind of again pointing at the watchtower um and it's it's within sh- uh, far range now and it's close enough that you those of you in the tower can see that there's this kind of ghostly like skeleton crew that are hurrying across the deck of this ship like a colony of ants um and uh, Lucretia, as it gets closer and the moon illuminates it and the ship itself kind of glows brighter, um, you kind of... Well, actually, Vanya, with your cute senses, you probably notice this is more, but you might not fully apprehend uh, comprehend what you're seeing. But yeah, Lucretia, you notice this cylindrical shape emerge from the front of the ship. Oh, no. And you see one skeleton on the deck lift a hand up and as it drops its hands, there is a deafening boom, and this ghostly cannonball is 
fired out the front of the ship towards the watchtower. No! Uh, Our plan is falling apart. So I roll a d20. Whoa. Ha! <laughs> That, is that what would be known as a crit? That is that? a crit. That is a crit. Oh, that, no. oh dear! That is a crit. Right, right. Okay. So, PC dead. Yep. Crits are max damage, and then you roll again, right? E yes, I'm just that's making sure that's the same for a GM. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Rayry's uh -huh. retreating uh, into GM her GM critical <laughs> success. Um, uh, so whenever you roll, you automatically succeed, and regardless of P PC, you if you critically succeed on an attack roll, you also deal extra damage. Start with the full value of the damage dice, and then make a damage roll cool. as normal to add the value. So and I'm just well, I'm just gonna do this in one single roll, okay? Looks like you're doing, taking this fight on your own, Azakart. <laughs> Been nice knowing you all. The damage roll, everybody! It's 3d20 plus 60. <laughs> How did you max out so good? How did you do that? <laughs> 92. Almost as much damage as you did to Atrak in Tail 1. <laughs> Okay. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Rot roll! Rot roll! How many points does this watchtower have? Anyone? So, what death option are you guys choosing? <laughs> <laughs> this cannonball flies true, and as a car, you look up as it strikes <laughs> the side of the tower punches clean through the stonework you hear the sound of wood being shredded and then another a second explosion as it erupts out the back side of this tower slightly lower down and as you look up you watch as the tower like you watch this stone tower visibly like arc backwards from the from the impact and then as it kind of corrects itself it then begins to list um, cool. The three of you in the tower. Um, tell me what. Uh, tell me what you're rolling, realistically, to try and escape this crumbling, this falling tower that you're in. How what, far up is it? Uh, probably about forty feet. Okay. Hmm. I have an idea from me. I mean, I know I can take care of myself, hopefully, situation. But <sighs> Tell you what, actually, what's probably easier, if the three of you can roll me a duality dice each, um, okay. and then we're primarily looking at whether it's hope or fear. Okay. Okay. So, Ray re-rolls with hope. Lucretia rolls roll with, with hope. Fear. No, you I, roll I, with I, hope? Oh, with hope, sorry. I misread that. And Vanier... Rolls with me. The three of you are hurled from the top of the well. The, you you slide as the top of the tower starts to tip and buckle under its own weight. Um, and as the three of you are cast from the tower um, in a plume of smoke and rubble, uh, Rayri and Lucretia are going to take major damage, and Vanya is going to take severe damage. Could I? argue that I would have used my teleport ability at this point to get safely to the bottom. Maybe. Uh, what's the blurb for your... for Sorry. that? Um, when I have no enemies in melee range, which is true, yes. I can make a spell cast roll, and I'm aiming for 13. On a success, spend a hope to disappear from where you are and reappear somewhere with a far range that you can see. So I would just go down to the ground. Okay. Uh, need to roll. Yes. Dice for that. So yeah, roll, roll me the spell, uh, spell craft. It's fourteen. That is Ooh. a crit. And that is a crit. Really? Yeah, because you got nice. doubles. 
Okay, so double seven, that is a crit. So, uh. We'll spend the hope to teleport to the ground. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so you. So you teleport to the ground, so your. Your. I'll, I'll downgrade it to minor damage right. because there'll still be, like, bits of timber and stone masonry and whatnot flying in all directions. Um. Okay. But as a car, yeah, you watch in horror as this uh, yeah tower just collapses um, backwards. Um, thankfully, not onto any kind of buildings uh, of of Cayley Point. Um, well, I, I think that's it for my turn. I'm not going to push the issue. Uh, who wants to go next? Can I just ask yeah. how damage works? So we've taken different levels of damage. What does that mean? So if you take what do I put on my sh- what on my sheet? So if you take minor damage, that is one hit point. So you mark okay. one hit point of health. Um, okay. Major is two. Uh, severe is three. Well, I can use an armor slot to negate one point. Can you can yes. So we're using the new armor rules. So yeah, you can expend one of your armor slots to reduce it down one level. So from severe to major, from major to minor, from minor to or nothing. Minor to zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll mark an. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, who wants to go next? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm using an armor slot. Um, just as a note to make it to severe to major. Okay. I was going to argue a, a feat and see if I could narratively spin a feature of mine that I've got as part of the character, but I think it's a bit far fetched. What, so what's the I feature? Think... Acute senses. <laughs> No, it's. I've got this. So, my third level warrior card, um, Scramble, uh-huh. it's meant. It's meant. It's worded because it's meant to be a short, short range thing. So, once per short rest, when an enemy in melee range would deal damage to you, you can avoid the damage entirely and move safely move out of melee range from the enemy. Um, so I was waiting for like a big hit from a like a like a boss or something. If, but obviously, if you want scenario, to scramble away from the tower, I will allow it. Um, okay, I will use that feature then um, to stop the severe damage. Okay, uh, Ray, Ray, have you got anything up your sleeves? Are you just eating shit? I just- <laughs> I'm just gonna eat. Uh, are we just kind of uh, so? Uh, Vinny provides two extra armor slots for myself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Vinny is kind of throws himself and me off the tower. Okay. And uses a, a little cushion and we kind of skid along. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, very good. Um, okay, in which case, yeah, the three of you pick yourselves up. Um, As a car, you're like, there's a cloud of dust that's emanating out from this tower. But yeah, uh, it's your collective turns. Who wants to go next? Um, uh, Peter, is it still within far? Uh, yes. Well, it's um, probably very far now because you're suddenly forty foot closer to the centre of the world. <laughs> That's different. The rough. That was rough. <laughs> Crits, yo. Um, <laughs> like by all means, if you if you want, uh, either you can hold fire for it to sort of have another go, or uh, if no one else wants to. If everyone else is waiting, the creature can have a second go. Yeah, I can't. I can only do stuff at far. The most I can do is far range. I can't gotcha. go further than yeah, far. Yeah, so I will happily sling just, another fireball. At it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is is anyone in need of any healing quite yet? No. She's no? got a little cut on her face. I've also got bolt beacon as well, so I can also do the far. Ooh, I think far I should okay. do that. Um. Okay, well, Lucretia, you, it's your turn again. Um, yeah, uh, make your attack roll with your fireball. Oh, sorry, I'm doing it. I thought, oh, I thought... Oh, I, I can do it. Sorry, I can do sorry. It. Well, it's a very sorry. far at the moment, bear in mind. Oh, uh, fine, 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 fine. Let, yeah, let me, let me do this. Uh, so, 8 plus 7 is 5th. Was that... 15 for 6, 17, 18 with hope. <laughs> with hope again! Uh, you yeah, are up to I, the maximum of yeah. 6. I am, yeah. Okay. Getting a bit embarrassing, actually. <laughs> uh, so it was, sorry, was it, what was it again, sorry? Um, 15, 18. So if it's 18, yes. 
18. Uh, Quick maths. Okay, roll for damage. Oh, how do I do that? Uh, what is the, well, what does it say the damage of your fireball is? The damage of my fireball is 1d8 plus 5. Okay. Magic damage using uh, my proficiency, <coughs> which is only 1. Yeah. 1d8, no, so we're on a proficiency 2 at this level. So now okay. it's 2d8 plus 5. Uh, I don't think Julia bought right. the proficiency upgrade. No, 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 I think you No, get no, it's anywhere. just you get two. it anyway. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. It's it's okay, so very good. 2d8 plus 5. Yes. Yes. So I can can I type that into yep. yeah. Andrew? How do you do it? Uh, so you slash. can press the little dices. Yeah, at the bottom. Oh. Yeah, click okay. the D8 twice, D8. and then pl- click the ah. plus button underneath. Roll it. Nine. And another D8. <gasps> ah. Roll it. One. Ten. <laughs> Ten. Ten magic damage. Okay. Avatia. Um, as you okay, so you hurl the fireball and it, like, <laughs> despite the fact you've just tumbled forty feet out of a tower uh, and sort of like teleported down to terra firma, like as you look up um, and you, you're able to focus in this moment to th- hurl the the fireball true. Um, what was the thing about the like the blast radius damage? Uh, so it basically says that um, you tar- the target and all creatures very close to them must make make a reaction roll. Sorry, so you only take the damage if you fail the reaction roll. Okay. Uh, fail the reaction roll. Or they roll. take half damage. So they take five if they succeed on that. Okay. So roll individual dice for all 40 skeletons all- on the yeah. 500 skeletons on the ship. So, uh, adversary reaction rolls. How do I do that? I assume it's just a d20. Mm. Uh, Possibly. Um, I imagine the... they might have different stats. Or... Oh, I just lost it. Reaction roll. Here we go. Um, I was looking at um, adversary. Um... They don't generate uh, fear or additional GM moves, and they don't contribute to the action record. It's a duality. Okay. okay, but then I will roll with a d20. Okay, cool. Um, so, these are... So, some of the crew get caught in the explosion. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, let's just roll 4d20 and look at the numbers separately. Uh, one of them is fine. I think two of them are fine, aren't they? What's the what's the target? Twelve. So, oh, is it twelve? Okay. The number is twelve. So two of the two of them are fine. Okay, okay. So yeah, as the this blast of fire kind of well, erupts. When you say fine, they still take five magic damage. Yeah. So as this blast of magic kind of uh, kind of rips across the the hull of the grave ship, um, it actually does still consume a full four of the crew. Um, and uh, that is one damage to the ship. Okay, cool. Um, as that happens, as a reaction, as the the ship kind of rocks away from the fireball, um, you see a number of the crew um, on the ship, uh, and you see one in particular, uh, Lucretia, that's sort of like grabs onto a rigging rope and leaps off from the back of the ship and swings along the length of the ship uh, and then releases and then sort of like hurtles through the air and lands next to you. It's the ghost pirate, the chuck. Uh, So it emerges within close range of the attacker and immediately activates. Um, (laughs) So as it lands, it immediately kind of surges to its feet and swings with its cutlass. Uh, This is D20 minus one. Uh, a nine versus your evasion? Oh, it, no, he does not. I, I just, he, he misses and I go, fascinating. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, you, yeah, you jump back as you say that and this uh, rusted scimitar just swings air, uh, cut, cuts through air in front of you. Um, <laughs> okay, so that was Lucretia's turn. Uh, who wants to go next because Lucretia rolled with hope? Um, happy... To I mean, if you wanted to run towards it, then you'd be in far range, Livy. Run towards 
the ship. Yeah, so I was going... Well, I was going to um, get the one that's come to ground. Okay. Yeah. Get, get him. Get him. Yeah. Um, so, um... So I, that's certainly within close range of you. Yeah. Uh, go get him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so as we were like, me and Vinny like dust ourselves off, got like a bit of blood on my nose, and I just look over and I just see just this new sort of witchy, like, witch that's with us just going, oh, fascinating. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> I jump onto Vinny and we charge okay. at uh, this nice. skelly bob. Yep, 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 yep. Um, attack roll. Let's get this one up. It is a chomp attack. Chomper. A chomper. Chomper wumper. <laughs> oh. Oh. <gasps> Absolutely. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely whiffed it. Rot roll. Okay, so that takes that is a three with fear, uh, well three plus something with fear. Uh, that takes me up to six of twelve fear. Whoa. Um. So yeah, as you as Vinny kind of lunges in for this skeleton, um, the skeleton, like for a moment, just turn like as Vinny lunges, the skeleton t- like crouches and turns incorporeal and Vinny and you go straight through it and then it rematerializes yeah. um, I, don't, oh. <laughs> I will uh, reactivate off the back of that and the grave ship will fly in closer and it's again it's also coming down to earth and uh, do your thing, Van. Yeah. Worryingly, as it reaches the top of the hill, you watch as the hull, starting from the back, the wooden planks, like the ghostly wooden planks, seem to almost start peeling away from the hull of the ship, and the mast, the the central mast, suddenly snaps and bends. And Azakar and Vanier, as you... Well, Azakar specifically, because it's landed in front of you. But you watch as this ship slowly transforms into this large, sort of like 30-foot tall ghost ship golem. As the wooden planks turn into sort of like legs, um, the cannon that it had fired has kind of migrated. Like the hull, like the the, the the front of the hull is now its right hand with the cannon barrel poking out of it. Um, the the sails that are protruding from its back make it look like um, fins that run down the, its spine, um, and where its head would be is what you presume to be the captain's deck um, because as well as all of the skeletons that are clambering up and down this thing um, there seems to be a well he, he stands out for his impressive hat uh, but there's a skeleton skeletal captain stood astride this ghost ship golem uh, as he points to you and all of the eye sockets of the skeletons on board glow with this intense cold blue flame uh, but yeah as a car it lands in front of you um, and as it transforms it swings its one of its fists at you mm. yeah. uh, that's not what I wanted to draw uh, <laughs> yeah it was you missed oh I will <laughs> so as this like and you notice that now that it's touching the ground um, the ghostly wood seems to be uh, shifting into a more physical state and you s- the stench of rotting wood fills your nose as this fist arcs towards you and you're able to just uh, duck out the way of this cumbersome swing um, but then the, the ghost ship golem stands to full height um, and like there's a, cl- a chorus of screams of the dead from the crew that are clambering across its hull uh, that's it for me uh, who wants to go next oh my gosh um how well 
Dampy looks eager. I think you are vibrating. <laughs> right I want to it. be its friend. <laughs> <laughs> Dampy is. Please, transform a ghost. <laughs> Sounds cool, doesn't it? Is, Va- is Vanya taking his turn? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> if anyone wants to tag team in who have lots of hope, feel free. But I'm going to go st- orchestrate at this golem. That is a clarion call for you, Julia, if you would like to tag team with Vanya. For sure. That okay. would be great. That would be three you- hope you have to spend to do the tag team. I- I've got the hope, don't worry. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so you spend three so Lucretia spends yeah. three hope, and between okay. the two of you tell me how you're combining your efforts and powers into a singular attack. I, um, I quite like the idea that I tap yeah. my staff against your gauntlets, charge them up with magic, and then you can do some yeah. kind of leapy punch or something. Yeah, I imagine um Seeing this um, thing, um, yeah, uh, Vanya just shouts out, "Lucretia!" and just try, like, try, like, tries to like dart by you, raising a gauntlet. Yeah. Okay. In anticipation. Hold, hold, hold up my staff, ready to imbue you. <laughs> and as gauntlet. the gauntlet scrapes across your staff, um, the fact that you have, do, does do you cast like primal magic? Or was it arcane magic? It's arcane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It, I'm sure the, how the magic amplifies the primal magic in the gauntlets. Yeah. At, like almost like a a, ma- um, a matchstick scra- scraping against um, uh, the lighter to uh, light a flame. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Vanya just goes charging in um, to um, basically uh, punch against this uh, golem's leg. Okay. Um, and uh, now what happens here, Julia, is yeah. we both make uh, hope roll. Uh, sorry, um, hope um, duality yeah. rolls. Yes, Both. yes. And we're looking to see who gets the like the better rolls out of us two. Um, can I? To use... Can I? Do we use particular modifier for this? Yes, so we do. You would use your spell you. spell I'll use my spell casting cast. trait. Yeah. No so problem. yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. I'm. Is it probably going gonna... for attack. Yeah. You're going to do, do a this. attack roll and I'll do a knowledge roll. Yeah. Okay. So that's a 23 with hope for me. Um, which um, is better than mine, I think. Wait, hold on. Uh, what did I just roll? 12, uh, 18 plus something. Plus, plus three. Attack. So 21 with fear you rolled. Yeah. What was yours, Julie? 23 with hope. Then yours is better, and we take that, and we both get a hope. Uh, only Lucretia gets a hope. Ah, uh, okay. Oh yeah, because she gets. Yeah, yeah. She's she never the hope gets yeah. a hope. Um, okay, oh, so Lucretia, you as you kind of imbue Vanier's uh, gauntlets with uh, additional arcane power. Um, the two, like what? Uh, effectively, Julie, you can have a look through your. Uh, spell list and figure out like what spell did I enchant Vanya's gauntlets with? Uh, probably a wild flame spell, okay. something like that, to add extra sort of fire to his gauntlets. So a twenty-three is a hit. Uh, please, both of you, roll me your damage, and then we'll add it together. Um, remember, it's uh, oh yeah, no, this is just yeah, roll your damage. Sorry. So what does Excuse that me. mean? So what's mean? the damage of wild flame? Oh, two d six. And technically, it would also add a stress target. Okay. So, yeah, um, add, add a stress onto yourself and then roll 2d6. Uh, it says. Yeah, only, add stress onto the person, into the target. 2d6 so. magic damage and a stress to any. Ah, uh, okay, to the ship. Okay, to the ship. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, so, I'm going to roll 2d6. It's five. Okay, and what's Dan Rollin? rolling? 15. So we do uh, 20 damage in total. 20 Whoa, damage boy. in total. Um, it's very good. Could I have spent a. Is there any creatures within very close? Uh, of its legs, probably not. They'll be kind of hovering around its torso primarily. Yeah, because I can't reach its 
torso. No. Um, okay. I can only reach his leg at this point. Um, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I won't pass well, anything else. Well, in which case, Vanier, as you leap up and your stony gauntlet connects with the side of the ship, um, you feel the now physical uh, rotten wood hull um, splinter under your fiery, icy blow. Um and it sends like you see ripples and cracks emanate from your point of co- uh, point of impact um, and a number of skeletons are sort of like knocked away from the ship and just <laughs> like discoporate uh, disco- well, discombobulate <laughs> as they <laughs> as they float away um, that is major damage hey. to the ship um, yeah, baby. as you like Vanya, as you sort of like then put your feet on the side to push yourself back uh, to land, um, you look up and notice that a uh, a skeleton of one of the crewmates has just leapt off the side towards you, um, cutlass in hand, and oh. it's going to uh, swing at you as it lands. Uh, um, or is that a, is that a um, uh, did you initiate a uh, uh, something to do this like it's, it's an immediate like reaction it's, it's like a reaction immediate reaction sorry yeah. yeah cool uh 11 to hit against vanier um my evasion hold on is 12 so <gasps> no oh. so the skeleton sort of like the, the cutlass embeds into the dirt where your feet were a moment ago as you kind of spring out the way um and then it looks up to you and um as its jaw unhinges uh who's next Take it out! As a car? I'll go next. Um, we can see the we can see the captain, can't we? Yes. Oh. How far would you say he is? Uh, well, he's thirty foot up, so he's he's close range. If you're at the feet of the of the ghost ship, which you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, I am gonna. In exchange for an agility roll, I will let you attempt to clamber the ship actually I was just well I was going to fire at him oh, okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was going to I was going to fire a bolt beacon at him oh very good very good yeah. okay yep roll oh. roll to hit mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not very good oh. <laughs> um, um, ooh, um so I think as you go to hit the captain with your bolt beacon I probably uh, would have said something like, go on Azakar, you can do it! And you can re-roll and take the new roll. Thank you. Go um, wow. With, That's with that... That's the only time get that in this fight. Oh, thank I you. can't do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, with those added words, I'm also going to spend a hope to use an experience um, mm. to use Keen Sight. Okay. Which will give me a plus two on that roll. So yeah. down to three. Oh, it's a crit. We love a crit. crit. (laughs) He doesn't even need to die before he does it anymore. (laughs) Um, Okay, yeah, roll me, roll me damage, and then add your max damage on top of it. Okay, so that is two, bomb, bomb, two d eight plus two. Roll that. That's going to be an 8, and so that's 2 D8s, so 16. So 24? Yeah, 24. 24. Ooh. And what else does uh, Bolt Beacon do? Um, deals that using proficiency and making them gl- glow brightly, they become vulnerable. They become yeah, temporarily vulnerable. Okay. You know what? You... What does this look like, Azuka? Um sort of upon seeing Vanya this little skelly like avoiding the skelly mans he knows that he's got it um he is gonna look straight back up and see the the, the pirate captain at the top um he's gonna sort of swift his hands around producing sort of like this uh divine bolt that comes from somewhere in his wrists uh-huh. um and then just aim it sort of straight up at him right into his face Okay. Hey. You watch as this bolt of light arcs up um, and sort of like towards the ship and then kind of course corrects to follow along the side of the hull um, as it kind of 
yeah, races up the side of his ship. Um, and the pirate, so the skeletal pirate captain is peering over the edge, having just um, been rocked by Vanya and Lucretia's combined attack. Um, and in this moment, Azakar, the, the captain cannot react quick enough as this bolt strikes him under the jawbone and his jaw and skull disintegrate in a flash of light. Um, off the back of a crit, I'm going to like use the damage thresholds for a pirate captain. Um, so that is three damage. That is severe damage to the ship. So it's taken six six damage. And as the pirate captain um, is blown to bits um, and like glowing bits of captain kind of litter themselves across the ship, uh, lighting it up, um, who wants to go next? Pretty good. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Ray Ray. I think it's your moment. Yeah, so is there so the captain is now The captain's gone and you can see the that um the ship is starting to um seemingly come apart at the seams. Like the the, the golem is kind of wobbling um under the jaw it's effectively Azakar has taken out the central nervous system of this ship and now it's just kind of flailing and thrashing. Um it looks like it's on its last legs. Um, seeing this, uh, Rayri, um, um, she sort of st- st- stands back, um, and with I, with one hand, she kind of blows into her hand and you could just see this little corrosive fireball just kind of um, like start to build up Mm -hmm. and uh, she sticks it onto the end of her crossbow Uh Uh (laughs) Uh, she's going to do a I suppose you can do a corrosive projectile spell but it's cooler if it's more of a ballistic on the end of it. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> um, and Azakar, your bolt beacon with the vulnerability, is that on damage or attack? Vulnerability. Yeah, so vulnerability, vulnerability it makes... Uh, so if a creature is vulnerable, that means any attacks against it has advantage, okay. which yes, means the hit roll. advantage okay. in this game, Plus add six. an extra d6, d6 to your roll. Cool, cool, cool. So I had my... That's it. Uh, and does anyone else want to add anything onto Ray Ray's attack roll? Any prayer I dice can. or? Uh, let me. I'm just looking. <laughs> I don't have enough hope to do anything. I need uh, to add, add a d. I need to yeah, add my d6 on. I see. Well, that's tasty. I mean, I, I can. I, I can give you both prayer dice if you want to aid you <laughs> in that role. <laughs> what's what's the prayer dice? Um, the prayer dice are what I can give you. So I've got a one and a four. So I can technically give you five. So, so you got to sixteen. Sixteen. I think if I remember rightly, the ship was around seventeen. <laughs> if it still has. Yeah, to I think so. Is there any more bonuses? Uh, I mean, oh, do I get, would it because it's a spell it, cost roll? Do I get plus? I, do I get my plus? Oh yeah, you haven't had your job, if you haven't had your job, ability ah, mod. So I get yes. plus three anyway. Oh okay. Cool. Nineteen. Way. Cool. Yay. Roll for damage. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she adds it on and she just blasts it straight at uh, just the centre, just going for a, 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 a the heart of the uh, heart. Of yeah, the, the yeah. Ulu. Um, and that's 
plus 11 well 11. that's that's minor damage which is one damage and Rayri <laughs> explain to me what happens <laughs> she's there she's there she's, she's going <laughs> <laughs> it's really tall. She's really small. Yes. <laughs> Just like, there's this little, like, little burning, uh, sort of like sticky bomb that just kind of flies its way up. It just, it just gets its mark, just hits it straight in the middle of the, of its chest. Internally, because the holes started to peel apart, yeah, so it's right in there. Yeah, it's like the, it's it's the shot of her life. <laughs> okay, um, and in which case, as this skeleton crewmate <laughs> turns to look uh, at this arrow that's just sort of like landed and that then begins to glow brightly, as there is this uh, small explosion that kind of ignites the mana the innate mana that courses through the ghost ship um you watch as this ship detonates in a fiery inferno as chunks of like rotten wood fly off in all directions and just like as they threaten to land on the buildings of Cayley Point uh, they all like disappear into this misty fog like the the skeletons you've seen before but as the top half of this ghost ship uh, is k- blown to bits, uh, the legs stagger and stagger backwards a few steps until one of the feet kind of goes over the precipice of the hill. And as the bottom half of this ship kind of stumbles backwards and begins to roll down the hill, um, it then <sighs> and dissipates as well. And as the moats of like necrotic mana uh, rise up into the night sky, um, the dark clouds recover oh, the moon, the glowing moon, and the night returns to normal. Very can't quite believe that that over. Well done, Rary. That was great. I meant to shot. <laughs> um as you st- <laughs> as you stand uh in uh, like around the ruins of the watchtower of Cayley Point um yeah. looking at the traps <laughs> that never got a chance to set off because the moment the ship touched down within the space of a few seconds you the four of you tore it apart which <laughs> <laughs> land of mannequins are there still like yeah <laughs> As the four of you sort of like take a moment to sit down and whoa, like because of this crazy series of events that took space in probably less than a minute, um, as the town folks start to filter out of their houses and make their way up to you on the top of the hill, uh, the four of you are lauded as heroes of Kaylee's Point for destroying the marauding grave ship. And amongst the thrill of the celebration, we will call it there. <laughs> Aww, yay! yay. <laughs> so, there we go. As Beef in the chat has said, yes, when in doubt, hit it. That's... Uh, <laughs> What's our reward? Um, a... The, the glow of a job well done. The glow of a job well done, yes. You, you collect your payment from uh, from HQ when you get back to Avonmore. Um, but yeah. That is it. Congratulations, everyone. You've successfully uh, defended Kaylee's point rather more to the point than I was anticipating, but there we go. Um, yes, uh, congratulations. Uh, we uh, we are pretty much done here. Um, I believe... So this this was just a, a little Halloween one-shot. Um, so Halloween? 
Halloween. 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 Um, so the next time you see us, we will be starting uh, like tail three proper, um, and we will see who is sat in these gloriously honoured four seats here. Uh, but yeah, make sure to keep an eye out on the Eerie channel to see when that comes out. Um, yeah, congratulations, everyone. I think this deserves some rousing outro music. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. Uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, comment down below on what your plan would have been uh, that would inevitably be replaced by just smacking the thing. Um, <laughs> And all plans go out the window once you start smacking yes yes absolutely um, and to keep up to date with any further Daggerheart live streams or uh, to see the upcoming finale of the campaign 2 Elysia Rising campaign uh, which stars Julia and Nate here um, make sure and may also include more dressing up <laughs> and may also include more dressing up uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications when we release new content because we're releasing loads and loads of stuff all the time and uh, yeah we wouldn't want you to miss out um, also I wanted to do a quick shout out for anyone that happens to be watching either live or um like after the fact but uh two of our guests from last time uh, georgia and theo uh have a uh, a, se a a dracula sequel podcast the homeward foundation uh which is perfectly suitable for these halloweeny times um they're running a kickstarter at the moment um you should absolutely 100 percent go check that out i'll put the link in the descriptions down below yeah they've got an episode one out and it's fantastic yes you can listen to it go and give some money to it so i can hear the rest of it because yes. they can't make I need the rest to know of it. You need you to know, know what happens <laughs> amazing um so yes thank you everyone we'll see you next time bye 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 bye, bye. 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 take this off